In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to set up the IVTS CAN shunt to work with Damien Maguire's VCU boards. In this example, I'll be using the Nissan Leaf VCU board. The shunt I'm using in this example is the IVTS 1K U3i CAN 2. Looking at the data sheet, we can see this is a 1000 amp shunt with three voltage channels of information and no CAN termination on board. To begin with, you'll need two 4-pin Duraclick headers, so you'll need a 120 ohm resistor, you'll need a 2-pin Duraclick header, and you'll need the crimp terminals uh, to go with them. The tools you'll need include a ratchet crimp, wire cutters and wire strippers, glue, in this case I'm using UV cured glue, and a soldering iron. Start by crimping the terminals for the Duraclick connectors. Crimp the four terminals for the bottom connector, and crimp the two terminals for the top connector. Once this is done, the terminals are now ready to insert into the Duraclick connectors. Insert the wires into the Duraclick connectors using the wiring diagram from the IVTS datasheet. Now apply the glue to the Duraclick connectors to create a watertight seal for the terminals and to prevent any wear on any individual wire or terminal connection. Make sure to apply this evenly to both sides before you use the UV light to cure the glue. Apply the light for as long as needed to ensure the glue is cured completely. Now it is time to trim your 120 ohm CAN termination resistor. Remove all but about 15 millimeters or about half an inch on either side. Crimp a terminal connector to either side of the termination resistor. The crimps are not designed to connect to solid core wire so this will need to be completed with solder. Ensure you apply enough heat to both the wire and the terminal connector to allow the solder to make a good join. Start by inserting one end into the second pin of the Duraclick connector. Once that's done, carefully bend the wire of the resistor without putting too much pressure on the solder joint to allow you to insert the other end into the third pin. This may require a little pressure, but be careful not to apply too much force to the solder joint. Now it's time to cover the resistor in glue. Make sure to cover both ends of the resistor thoroughly to ensure that no short occurs as this might result in a lack of communication from the CAN channel in use. Lastly, make sure to twist the CAN communication wires to ensure they experience the same noise. A good rule of thumb is about one twist for every inch.